we're gonna take something from the back lot, something military, something cool, and make something for for you guys. Any of those high like combustion stills, if you get it with a hammer, your shot's going up. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel like American Pickers right now. We got a little slow spot in the shop and we have this corner of our lot that's just covered in junk. And Dave is always like, he's like, oh, clean that up, clean that up. And this is the corner that all the stuff that's just like, eh, questionable on whether it'll be used or not. There's a lot of uses for any of this, whether it's to repurpose it for what it was intended for or to use it in a new brand new way, right? Or storefront. Yeah. Yeah, have you guys walked through? If you shouldn't, you should. A lot, but a lot of repurposed stuff. A lot of repurposed. We have, for example, you ever seen The Simpsons? Like Homer Simpson's uh, chiropractor. Chiropractor, yeah. chiropractor thing, it's uh, the, the spinal, spinal roller. The spinal cylinder. One, two. Better not sue. <laughs> My back's kind of jacked up right now. And like this. Oh, dude. Hey, it worked. My shearing leg pain is now a gentle numbness. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Dude, what else we got? Your wife's building a, a dance studio, My right? wife teaches dance to your you. Your wife's building a to dance you. studio, Cole. I and know. They're always getting Sparks crap. brought in. Sparks brought in a houseboat a little bit ago, and we got a bunch of props. But look at this. For your wife's dance studio. Doesn't that work? Huh? Wrong, wrong kind of dance, man. And we're not building that kind of studio in my garage as much as I want to. We're not doing it. Maybe we'll do it. So what is that? Is that an old welder, Ron? Yeah, that's an old welder. Like Whoa, two. how old? I'm not gonna lie. This is kind of I cool. kind of feel like American Pickers right now. Have you ever seen that show? I love American Pickers. The guys go through and dig through stuff? Yeah. Well, this is an old school stick welder. Ron just educated me on that. I did not know <laughs> I'm not gonna I just thought it was like a heavy brick. I thought it was a gas pump. And she said there's a lot of copper and metal in here that's worth money. So we're gonna keep this. And it's a really cool old piece of machinery that we want to keep and probably put in like a storefront at some point. But um, this is our problem. We're like hoarders, but, but we have space for it. But it makes sense because because we already own it and it comes in handy because we build a bunch of crazy stuff. In this episode, you're gonna we're gonna find something here that we can take and repurpose and make something else out of. That's all I'm looking for, other than my wife's dancer. Pool, okay. Okay. Hey, look at this. When I was in Boy Scouts, about 10 years old, okay. The coolest activity we ever did, we took leaf springs and we cut sections out of it and we made our own knives. Like giant out of leaf giant. Spring? Yeah. It you was like cool. Ram, were you like a ram? Boy Scout? Yeah. Hey, dude, we made like listen. Boondoggle. I thought the boondoggle it was probably was harder. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what boondoggle is. That's my bad. It was probably about a 15 inch Hold on. section. You ever seen Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah, but boondoggle. What? It's the what she shows up with. It's just like she's trying to sell at the doorstep. Must have for this season's fashion. I already made like affinity of those at scout camp. Oh, they those things? For college. Yeah. You made boondoggles? Yeah, I made boondoggles, you made knives. I, we obviously went to different uh, Listen, scouts. we did, we straightened those out and we grinded on them. It was pretty cool. All right, all right, let's okay. find something. What are we doing with these things over here? The springs, ginormous, ginormous springs. Cole, I'm gonna show you how strong I am. Oh yeah. All right, hold on, don't Bracelets. Waste, don't waste your energy. What are we doing? Curl off. Curl off! <laughs> Oh, sh <laughs> Ready? Maybe closer to eight. No, I can't even do one. Like, <laughs> even just holding this? This is lighter than mine. Oh, come on. Ah. <clears throat> I'll stop right there. I mean, I, only, I can only do two more than you, Cole. What no, these, really, Ron, what are we doing? Uh, MRAPs. Big five ton and plus the modern assault vehicles. Why do we have these? Are we using them? Are we repurposing them? Uh, we had. Or can we use these? Yeah, we, yeah, we can use them. These don't have much value to guys that are using the suspension for monster trucks and stuff. Okay. They're using way softer rate springs for uh -huh. like a regular truck. Yeah, but they they do have value just in the steel. It's spring steel, high quality spring steel. Yeah, that's plus heavy. Um, we do have a couple trucks that use them in case we pull a spring. Can I see one? Yeah. We're gonna do one of those like fast forward like. <laughs> Are we there yet? We're here. That looks right. Yeah. Yeah. So the Oshkosh has a similar spring. It might not be identical, but it's a, a little bit bigger. Yeah. It looks like. How much would it take to compress that? Five tons. Hey, that's true. I'm one eighth ton. Okay. 
Let's get on here. Let's see if we can compress the spring. Ready guys? How are you doing that? One, <laughs> two, three. So I know a blacksmith, he could probably turn this into something. Spring what steel, you, spring steel is pretty good to use on, for blacksmithing on, for all kinds what of stuff. What would you make? I would make uh, paper clips. Yeah. Really strong paper clips. Whoa. Do you know how many paper clips you could get out of that? A lot, and we could resell them. Yeah, we could just go the strongest staples. paper clip in the yeah. world. Over a year ago, Sparks guy tasked us with something. He said, all these different YouTubers, like Whistlin and Cletus, they are taking a portion of their sets, their shops, their whatever, oh. and they're selling it. Remember when Whistlin shredded that truck and everything? Yeah, he put them in little bottles, and he sent them out to his fans. One of the funniest and coolest like ways to do something that I've ever seen. I think he took gravel from his racetrack that he purchased, and he box that up and kind of the same thing in a little cup you could sell it own a little bit of Cletus's track and so at that time Sparks like that's kind of cool so we're gonna take this to a blacksmith and see what he can make out of it yeah <laughs> stay tuned to the end of the video because we're gonna show you what the blacksmith makes out of this, uh, this guy? down in price he does a lot of tactical stuff Siri give me directions to price a hundred <laughs> miles away two hours and three minutes uh, so we're gonna send Ron to Price. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all gonna go down there. We're gonna take these uh, these springs down to the, this blacksmith and Price, I guess. And get this, guys. Whatever he makes out of them, we're gonna give to you guys. And the way you get entered to win whatever he makes is by texting blacksmith to this number. Text the word blacksmith here. It's gonna be a little bit of a drive. We got two hour drive ahead of us. All right, uh, Ron, pick that up. <laughs> but there's no workman's comp on this. This is, yeah, just this is private. all on you, man. Yeah, this is private decision. <laughs> Dude. Well, okay, Let's smart go. Hey, guy. We're actually gonna see how much these weigh. All right, I went and got off my scale at home. I wanna weigh this thing and see how much it weighs. That's a glass scale. I know, it's a, I can't decide whether I should like hold this and weigh myself or just put it on there. Surprised it hasn't broken with you already. No, those are usually it's rated to 350. 214.4. With clothes on, baby. Hold on, 2.4, ready? 320.6? That's 104 pounds. Wow. Well, did you see out. me with that? Oh, we're you see me one. doing those full things? Yeah, you did like four of them. I did four of them too, though. 106 pounds on the dot? What I'm getting at is whatever he makes, I'm guessing he could make a few of them. <laughs> no, really. I did not think that was 100 pounds. Pedro, come here. Come on, I am boozy. What did he say? Hey. Oh. What? I am boozy. You are not boozy. Oh, okay. come on. I need you to let it. Look, I need you to start here. Then you need to come up. Wah. Don't Above do your head. Easy. Ah. How much? Está muy pesado. 100. Libra. Libra. And again, we're going to take this down to the blacksmith. Yep. And we're just going to let him figure out what he's going to make out of it. Text blacksmith to this number. Blacksmith. That and you could win whatever the blacksmith can make out of that. Oh, it's right there? I was thinking it would be like way in the front. But all right, man, who wants to carry this? load in let me do it i gotta lose the weight anyway we're down here in price beautiful price in the Not middle of just price it's the beautiful price yeah and it's really cold <laughs> and it's really cold but and we've got this uh, spring here that we found in the back lot we're gonna bring it down to our blacksmith buddy that uh, is gonna make something and I, I thought of something on the way down none of us got anything for dave for uh -uh. his birthday i got him something i decided to keep it you decided oh. to keep it <laughs> okay all right so sorry dave we missed your birthday with this sorry dave. Hope, hopefully whatever we come out of this you know makes up for so that. birthday present for dave not only birthday present for uh viewers but birthday present for dave yeah the viewers like we said you know text blacksmith to this number and we'll be sending you guys you know something that 
that we had made. Or we not, won't we... be sending everyone, just to make that clear. Yeah, not Text Blacksmith here, but we will be choosing people that are texting from that, that will be able to receive whatever comes from this All creation. Right, man, you're always raining on my parade. I wanted uh, to send everybody something. We're not sending everyone, How sorry. Many, we'll I... say like 10, maybe. Okay, or maybe five. 10, maybe 10, oh, we'll see. Let's we'll just see, see what. We'll see. The blacksmith can do with this and we can go from there, okay, Colt? You All right, got it? Man. Do you need any help? What do you think he's going to make with this? A few inches later. All right, all right. Okay. You can carry it from here, man. Got it. That's heavy. Okay. <laughs> go knock on the door. See if Andrew's home. Hopefully he answers the door soon because this thing is really heavy. Andrew! <laughs> Andrew! Open! What's happening? Hey, buddy! This is really heavy. <laughs> Let's take it in the shop where it's warm too. Okay, Sound let's good? do that. Yeah, let, that's gonna be a better idea. Can you carry it or you want Yeah, to I got it. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, this is the place. Oh, I'm so excited to be in here where it's not cold. <laughs> this is awesome. Here's the deal. You've seen, this is the coil Ron's been talking to you about, okay? Right. This is spring. Check so we're bringing it down to you. It's from one of our five tons. We can't use it anymore, so we just wanted to bring it down. Yeah. See if you could forge anything and get your ideas. I could definitely make something out of that. Yeah. Whatever you want, something manly. That sound all right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely something manly. Why would you think anything different? I just carried a 106 pound spring. It's definitely got to be manly. We're wanting to build something from the shop for all our awesome viewers, okay? There's been a lot of different YouTubers giving away parts of their shops and everything like that. Then we got an idea. We're like, well, it wouldn't be that bad to make something more sentimental for Heavy D himself. And while we were thinking about it, it's a five ton spring, okay, military related. Um, you've served. That's right, yeah. Thanks again for your mm -hmm. service. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. And Dave's dad, he served uh, in the National Guard, and he loved everything about the military. Huge patriot, everything. So, we're kind of thinking, here's your canvas. Take it away. Well, you know, that's like a, that's a good canvas. You know, that's that's carbon still, so I could do something with that. But uh, military, military, I think uh, I think a knife, though. Okay. I think I could do a knife. The reason why, it's a tool. We could all yeah. use them. So I, I could crank out a knife with that. Um, you know, it's going to be difficult, though. That's, that's a big boy, so it's going to take some thought. You want to do a knife. This is really, this is coiled. You see that, right? Yeah. Last time I saw it, knives are straight, so what, I'm not really sure what how you can do that. It's, it's heat and muscle, man. Heat and muscle. Yeah, I, I could show you. Heat and muscle. You bring the heat. <laughs> I'll bring the muscle. I can't. I can't be the muscle. No, I'm his cousin. I'm oh. Kmart cousin of the muscle. Well, now, yeah, we're. We're gonna let Andrew take it off and, and show you exactly yeah. the the process he's gonna use to turn this into a knife. First things first, you gotta prep the forge, you have to warm it up. So kind of stand back a little bit. I you win. It's it really is pretty cold, cold outside. I wanna crawl in there. How hot is this getting? So for this material I want it like twenty nine hundred degrees. Holy crap. I, I actually wanna get it white hot. I wanna yeah. get it past critical. So 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit. 2,900 degrees. That will take about five minutes. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I well, screw you, this. Pizza Hut. You've been holding back on us. What's the melting temperature of steel? This is about 3,200 degrees, and that's actually so where you're getting it to 2,900 degrees, 200 degrees lower than the melting temp. But see, metal's weird. It's it's a different material. Although you can bring this up to melting point, it'll still hold its shape. You actually need a force. So like, if I get it to melting, it's just not gonna ooze. It's nice, right? It's good. But if I hit yeah. it with a hammer, it'll spread like Play-Doh. So it, it's that's where you have to be able to watch it and manipulate your steel. That's what you were saying. You get it to the point where you can visually see I'm there, yeah. and that's where you pull it out. But you know, it looks scary, right? Yeah. But you can see I can keep my hand this close to it, and it's fine, right? Of course you have to respect it, but the fact is being a blacksmith, half the time you're this close. I mean, that's why I have no hair, right? <laughs> I was about to say, did you singe something? Is that... And then we wait. So 
then once it's out of the forge though, we really have to wait till it's white hot because that metal's already stressed, right? It's, there's a reason why it's in a spring, it's a spiral, they've actually stressed it into that position. So we have to relax it flat again, but you have to get it extremely hot. And, and another thing when you're doing blacksmithing, you never wear gloves. You have to be able to fill your tools to see if they're hot. When you touch things in a blacksmith shop, you have to be wary everything's hot. But if you have gloves on, you might do this. Next thing you know, you're done, your hand's done. And then also with a hammer, you have to be able to index the hammer correctly to whatever face you're using. This face is like flat, so it'll flatten the steel, but this face is slightly round, so it'll spread the steel. You don't wear gloves with it because you have to be able to index where your hammer is at all times. But then you're also always filling the heat with your hands. You're always filling it because your eyes can be deceiving. Because the other fact is, is this anvil is super cold right now. Yeah. And it will suck the heat out of anything you work with. So the first few strikes and hits, it's going to be cold. That's going to go white hot to like black almost instantly. There's a lot of flame coming. Is that out the back side or is that underneath? Or It's out the little doors. You know, and, and the thing too with this type of stuff is like I haven't built this because I've tackled projects where I haven't been able to get the material warm enough because all the heat's escaping. Now, the thing about like blacksmithing too is it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Uh, you know, a, a typical knife in the 1800s, early 1900s, if a guy's working on it, it'd take him a month, a month and a half, just because moving steel is not easy, especially with hand hammer. But even in modern age, this is still crucial, because if you go to any big actual knife manufacturer, they'll still have a technician who sits there with a hammer like this, taking a finished blade and just dinging it straight. So this is the heart of it. You can see in here, there's still, there's still black spots. It's deceiving because the surface of the steel will tell you one thing, Yeah. but the core might be different. So the actual first way I tell is actually when I strike it first. If I pull it out and it's white hot, but I strike it and it dings, I know the center is still hard. So it's rebounding. But if okay. I pull it out and it's white hot and when I strike it, it kind of, it's dull. It mushes. I know the whole core is heat is thoroughly heated. But I'm gonna turn the light off because it will help you uh, kind of really tell the heat. You know, all the old timers they swear by watching your still, and it's crucial. You have to watch yeah. it. Yeah. So you're saying this is a lot like a marshmallow. Like the outside, it's nice and brown, but if you take it off too early, it doesn't work. You gotta wait. Get it nice and mushy in the middle. So when you smash it, it's really good. Just like, just like a marshmallow, Caleb. Just like a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> With this, I'll pull it out and I'll put it on the anvil and I'll actually strike it. And you can see, watch how fast the heat will get sucked out of it. This is, gonna explode. this is way too cold, but you can hear it'll rebound. You hear like that, Oh yeah. right? It's that sharp crack. It's way too cold, so you have to stick it back in. So, that's a five gallon tank. How long does that last you on this? Give or take, I could run the forge full blast for about eight hours. Eight hours full. Wow. It, it's very efficient. These are little Venturis. And this is a store-bought forge here, but this is a homemade gas system. Uh -huh. And all that is is a welding tip, uh, like a .04 tip off of a welding gun oh, really? inside there. And it forces the propane down into like a jet. It's super efficient that way. It's warm enough to give it an initial strike, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to test it. I'm going to see if it's warm through the core. If it's like spray, like you don't need glasses or anything like that. You know, if you put like wrought iron in and you crack it, and it's sparking. Really? You put titanium, magnesium, any of those high like combustion steels. If you hit it with a hammer, your shot's going up. Really? So you always have to be careful. But this is just a testing phase. I'm going to test it to see if it's soft. 
If it's soft, then I'll take it to the press and then I'll just press it out. You see, you kind of hear that difference? Yeah. It's still a little bit tangy, but I can yeah. feel that it's mushy, right? right. So now, You're breaking some of that scale off. Now you can kind of see it's already yeah. a little bit flat there, yeah. right? So we'll stick it back in. We'll get it back up to temperature, and then we'll take it to the press. Okay. All right, we're ready. And you can see, when I press it down, the mark will actually go black, because this yeah. is sucking all the heat out. See how it sucks that heat out? So, you always have to be wary of your heat. Because I think when you're first starting off, like you might not be able to hear that dull. Not because you're hearing impaired, but because just anyone might not be able to hear that. What would be another sign for somebody that can't hear well <laughs> if that person ever did this? Man, you just, man, you can't be in the trade. Okay. <laughs> you can't be in the trade? I was like, I was wondering, I'm like, could I be a blacksmith? And well, it's said, like in junior high when you take those tests to see what test? it was. Yeah. Hey. You had to uh, mark that off. I was supposed to be an air traffic controller. I don't know why they narrowed it down to that, but it came up in three different tests. What are the chances he drops? It, he'll probably actually just bust his finger up. It's fine though. Okay. It's good. I'm going to be pretty timid doing this. I usually am doing something for the first time. So just walk me through this, okay? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to grab the sucker. Now do I want to get closer to that base? Yeah, get as close to the base as possible. That's freaking hot, man. Oh, yeah. What? It, okay. And when you take your hammer, hold your thumb like this for the first few strikes so you index your hammer head, right, so it doesn't rotate. Okay. Oh. But I'm down here, right? And you can choke up. Okay, as as you choke want. up. Yep. Right here. And pressure down here. A lot okay. of pressure. Okay. Anywhere to hit? Anywhere. Anywhere. Dude, you can feel that. And then when I'm my to go back in. You're good now to go back in. I don't want to. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. Okay. So how many so, times do you have to do that? The, to turn that billet, well, to put it in perspective, a few hours. We train it off for hours, yeah. And we just crack for a few hours. And so she does this too? She does. So she's hiding her muscles under the coat. We're just going to take this hot billet, just put it right on the ground, and then I'll show you the no, next step. Now it's like a cooking show. Every blacksmith has a maker's mark. Yeah. So I have like a big one, and then I have a small one, right? And just depending on the size of the blades. Oh, that's cool. So every blacksmith, every bladesmith will do it differently. I do a hot stamp. It's nice. like super deep and clean, and, and then you would grind your blade out. Like it's another 
20 steps. You have to grind it to thickness. You have to grind bevels in it, right? You need to make it sharp. But if we took that billet or this blade now and tried to drill through it or cut it or grind it, we wouldn't be able to. It's, it's too hard. So we would put our maker's mark in it. And then after that, we would bring it back up to white hot, shut the forge off, and we'd let the whole blade cool while the forge cools overnight. And that makes it soft again, that's annealing it. Okay. That makes it soft so you can work with it. So then we'll take this bad boy. Take it right over here. Line it up however you want. One shot, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. We'll let that guy cool down. And you'll start to see the monkey. I started making them for buddies, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago almost. But uh, we've only been kicking butt for two years. Yeah. Really, the last year and a half yeah. has been crazy. So we have our billet, we got our stamp, and now we're going to take it to the grinder. And on the grinder, are I'll you working it. on the, I'm not, I'm just, <laughs> hey, touch I it. don't have my gloves on, so I can feel the heat. <laughs> he taught me that. Are you grinding wow, just the blade now, or you're going to gr clean up the surface, everything? It, it depends on what the client wants. Me, I love clean stuff, so I'm going to clean everything, right? Okay. So, and that also includes thickness and straightness, right? Because inevitably, yeah. after the forge and the anvil and hitting it with a hammer, it's going to be all wavy. You need to grind the thickness, and then you need to grind bevels into it. You need to make it sharp, uh huh? right? And with that, there's so many different attachments and grinders, but I do a technique called hollow grinding. So my bevel Bevels are actually like a spoon. Yeah. Right? And that makes okay. it like extremely strong, but thin blade, right? It's caving it in, it's concave, yeah. right? And then you flip it so you have two concaves that make essentially it's a pyramid, but yeah. just with curved walls, right? Yeah. Triangle, strongest mm -hmm. geometric shape. <laughs> right on Wikipedia. So then you take your blade and you grind it and grind it. Each side, each side. Then you're just sitting here. What grit are you using right now? This is 120 grit, and then you just start, and it takes time, and then you just eyeball it. Even just those two passes. Yeah, those two passes oh, yeah. got quite a bit. Well, these are, and the reason why is, you know, there's like different levels to everything. When you first start off, you're like, man, I can't spend money on good stuff. And then when you spend money on good stuff, it's like, hell yeah. You know, why you know and like, these are 90 bucks a piece, right? You have different ones. These are cheap ones. These are three bucks. These are just sandpaper, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have like these awesome, scotch bright cleaning pad ones. Yeah. And that's how you really clean things up. So it's just a progression. That's all it is. You can't be a wizard with it. You have to, you have to follow the rules of like the steel. You have to. The heat treat, annealing, making it soft, making it hard. It's all the same. It's just a process on how an individual does it. I do mine completely different than the next dude, but the end goal is still to make like the most tough, durable tool you could have. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, you just won't stay in the game. So if you have a weird process, but you're good to go, that's bladesmithing 101. So you guys just saw this incredible process that uh, Train Monkey Blade and Train Queen have put together. We just brought this down to their shop and they're going to make us 10 blades, okay? These aren't just any 10 blades. One, they're blades from our back lot. So you're going to have a piece of Sparks Motors. And a piece of history, because it came off like military built equipment. Absolutely. Yeah. Two, these are being made specifically for Sparks right now. So they're going to have some sentimental value built into that. We don't know exactly what that's gonna be yet, but it's definitely going to have a lot of sentimental value for him. And three, no one else is going to be able to get these blades except for Heavy D and 10 of you. So blacksmith to this number, go do that right now. Text blacksmith to this number. Also, just do us a favor. Follow Train Monkey Blade Co. on do Instagram. Yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor, not even us. Follow it on Instagram because you're gonna be able to see the process of how this is made and even more cool stuff. Go, now. 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 <laughs> Just now. Get out of here. What's up, guys? What's How's it going? Good, you? Good to see ya. Yeah, you too. Was it a good trip? Yeah, it was nice. Okay, yeah. good to see ya. And you remember Charlie, our son, Charlie, shop apprentice and all yeah, that. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Good to see ya, man. Heck yeah. Well, let's go to the conference room. 
let's uh, start off there. All right, guys, we drove down and we dropped off a bunch of springs to you. Just thinking, this guy's a blacksmith. Well, it's a family business. It's a family business. A friend. And son, and son, I, okay. Family, family of blacksmiths. So we're gonna drop off these springs. It's something from the shop. We wanna make something for our viewers and everything possibly to give away. That was a week yeah. ago, and now I have four boxes in front of me. They, and I haven't seen them, and I'm really excited. It, it, there's a lot of inspiration though. Uh, okay. Dave's dad and myself in my military service. Yeah. And, and also materials and function. So this is what we came up with. So this is called the Stell, and the reason for that is this handle material is also the same like carbon fiber silver twill that we make that goes into the F-35 and the F-22 Stealth Fighter. So this is the exact same material, it's just cutoffs of what we make and give it to the bigger people. And this is like a little poker. It's a little yeah. fight knife. It's a good like little EDC. It could do anything well. And uh, you can see the lines are kind of dramatic. So it's black oxide coating, carbon fiber silver twill from Stealth Fighters, topographic map, cheap, with a nice little clip that could go on with any material, your belt, your That's pocket, awesome. with great retention. It's hard to say, but start to finish, just to get the rough shape is about three hours each knife. Wow. Just rough shape and that's not grinding, that's yeah. not drilling holes, that's just spring to flat stock to being either cut or forged out. That's it. That is absolutely awesome. Okay, got the stealth. That's the stealth. This is uh, the Deadfall, and this is more like Utah inspired because we're a Utah based company. You guys yeah. are Utah based. The wood that comes from this is Box Elder Burl, and it's from Mirror Lake Highway. It's all Deadfall. And yeah. we have an individual I buy this from, and it's stabilized. So, although it's beautiful, it looks just as good and it functions just as well as oh, yeah. synthetic material. And that was the inspiration for this knife. This is more like a Japanese inspired Tonto design. Okay. Um, but you'll see the coating on this, this like gold bronze coating is N-A-N-O ceramic coating. The same coating they use on the M1 Abrams tank, the main wow. barrel for durability. And this is a cool little design with a polished grind on that one. Same style sheath, just black. I love that burl. So Utah materials, Utah companies. With some tank coating on it. With some tank coating. Are you sure you didn't like use other material for this? This really came from those springs. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're pulling a quick one on us. <laughs> this is amazing, man. Incredible work. So again, if you guys are seeing this, you just saw the stealth and deadfall knife and Alex Goings put it right here. You can win the stealth or the deadfall by texting blacksmith to this number. So text blacksmith to this number and you get uh, entered for a chance to win one of these. But there's another knife here. There is, yes. And I'm just going to say just by the name of it, it it's got to live up to it because Bill was Bill was a one of a kind dude. Yeah. I, he was an absolutely amazing guy. You'd asked me a little bit about this when you were building it, and he had a phrase that said, he always would say, oh, you're one of the good guys. Mm -hmm. And it was always good when he told you that because a lot of times he'd call you expletives and let you feel <laughs> really bad about yourself, and then he'd say, nah, you're one of the good guys. So, without further ado, yes. let's see the bill. This is the biggest knife we've made. It's not concealable. I mean, this is like, this is a Dundee knife. That's a knife. That's a knife. The sheath says, we the people. And I know that kind of strikes a chord with a lot of patriots and it kind of brings some sentimental value for just good Americans. You know, yeah. That's what we live by. The second thing though is the handle material, although it looks just like normal green, this is Vietnam era fatigues, olive drab fatigues, cut up into pieces and compressed with resins, and it's a G10 micarta material made out of old uniforms. And you can see, it's a big one. And it that says, is one of the good guys. One of the good guys. Check it out. In his handwriting. Yeah. In Bill's handwriting. Yeah. That's absolutely awesome. So where do you find that stuff? Like, it's amazing you got uh, fatigues and it was compressed and whatnot. That's just something 
you're able to get a hold of, or that's part of your no. So it's a, it's you just have to be resourceful. But like a, yeah. a good thing for us is like Uncle Sam's Army Navy. You could just go and buy them. Yeah, it's surplus. But then there's also other individuals that specialize in that. So we're a small business, and we reach out to other small businesses that make handle material. I reached out to another individual, and he made the handle material for us. Do you cut all the um, grips as well? Yes. So, and when you guys were down at the shop, you saw the grinder. Yeah. Yeah. We just sit there on the grinder and we just shape just by hand. That looks really uniform. Yeah. It's taking some practice. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, everything's by hand. You guys are awesome. <laughs> with really? The, with the help of, of course, you guys and other small business. So we yeah. rely on other people. Sure. Suppliers, vendors. But so. this is absolutely awesome. Cool. Last week, I didn't want to bring in one of the springs because they're just too heavy. Um, I don't want to lift it anymore. <laughs> we dropped off a spring and we got this. Yeah. Something we were just keeping out by worthless. Yeah. Made it into something. That is very cool. Thank you so much, guys. This is what I'm thinking. Like I said, we're gonna give away to you awesome viewers, five of the Deadfall, five of the Stealth. I want you to text Blacksmith to this number, but I also want you to go check out Train Monkey Blade Co., right? At Train right. Monkey Blade Co. on Instagram? Instagram and then our website, www.trainmonkeyblade.com. Yeah. Oh my gosh, if you guys want to see some awesome work, you need to go on there and see what this this family can do, okay? Mm -hmm. This is absolutely wonderful, and uh, I can't imagine a better gift to give Dave. I'm excited to give this to him, and then I know there's quite a few other people that he'd love to give a special gift from Bill on, so. <laughs> so Dave wanted to grab a portion of the shop to making something to give it to people or to sell it on the website, things like that. Yeah. Because there's a bunch of YouTubers out there, like they'll grab gravel from the um, race track that they purchase and they'll oh. put it in a little bottle, send it out, like sell it because people find that really cool. Yeah. Then one of our guys is like, hey, we've got all these five ton springs, these giant things. We can't use them anymore. But I know a blacksmith that can make some pretty cool stuff from it. We get to know this blacksmith a little bit. He served in the Marines, all this cool stuff. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, dude, I want something that we can give Sparks that kind of hits home for him because his dad was really involved in the armed forces and everything, and he loved it, all that stuff. Yeah. And so I had him make a knife that we called the Bill. Okay, now with it called the Bill, it's a giant knife, because <laughs> Bill's crazy, so it needs to be giant. Yes. It has We the People on and everything, Patriot-wise. The like handle that. is made out of Vietnam-era fatigues that have been compressed into resin, and then he just grinded it out to make all that shape, which is very, oh, very like cool. It. Very cool. And then I grabbed a bunch of writing from from Taylor. Wow. Thank you. So I sweet. want you to have one. That is so sweet. I